let's get to the point. Is measles deadly? I'm bringing on Dr. Bob Sears to get to the heart of that. Bob, can you hear me? Yeah, hey, Dell. Hey, Bob, yeah, thanks for joining you me. I, I know you're in the middle of um, you know, a, a day at the clinic and seeing, seeing your patients, yeah. so we're gonna make this really quick. Is measles deadly, Bob? Can you just give me, like, how do we scientifically look at that? I mean, there's a lot of emotion around this. What do we know about the science of measles and how deadly it is? Well, the best science we have, Dell, is, is basically what was the fatality rate back in the United States when everyone used to catch measles? When every single child caught it and developed lifetime immunity, the fatality rate was about one in 10,000 children who, who caught the disease uh, suffered a fatality. One in 10,000. You know, some adults caught it as well. Um, so if we look at our whole population, it was something like one in 500,000 of our entire population would, would suffer fatality from measles. Um, and so, you know, it's not a disease that rampages through a country and kills everyone left and right. You know, we've been very fortunate in the United States in a well-fed, well-nourished country like ours, where people are not deficient in vitamin A. Um, you know, uh, the fatality rate is extremely low. And uh, we have not had a child die of measles. I believe the last child who died was, was 2003. Oh, time to go on your show, Dell. Sorry. Oh, all right, there Dell, we go. Sorry, it's my cell phone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so 2003 it, was the last fatality in a child here. So I use that. Uh, I've said oftentimes it's, it's, it's this, in 1960, before the vaccine ever arrives, the death rate of measles is one in half a million people. I mean, that's a point zero 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 something nothing that you could even imagine. And people say, well, you're manipulating the truth. But it's really not. I mean, I think that's the more accurate way to talk about the measles because we talk about something that really is contagious. It goes all over. And when you're going to spread hype on your news telling everybody you better be afraid of dying of this issue, what you're saying is you personally are in danger. Well, first of all, you right. are not personally in danger at a rate any higher than one in half a million people dying. Now, we could get to, and because there's still, you're not all going to even catch the measles. So what you're saying is even those that caught it, and, and it, was, it was contagious, so it was like three to five million people every year, of them, still only one in 10,000 died. Now, what were those patients like at that time? Were those the health, was that like a healthy, robust, you know, child running around? Well, it was a mixture. We, we know for sure if you are malnourished and you're low in vitamin A, as as uh, some children were back there, and your your risk of dying is way way higher. We know that for a fact. So you're right. Now we're we're better at medicine. Now we're better at nutrition. Our kids are, uh, you know, hopefully are, are healthier or better nourished than they were 50 years ago. Um, and we also know you can use high dose of vitamin A therapy if you're exposed to measles and you get two days of very high dose vitamin A, that lowers the, the complications of diseases dramatically, uh, of measles dramatically. And so, uh, you know, we have better medicine. If, if you do get really sick, we can you know, hospitalize you and support you. So, you know, if, if we had measles go around in our population again now, we would, I feel like we would not see a fatality rate of one in 10,000 like we did back then. I think the rate w would be would be much lower than that. We, wow. you know, Del, the, the, I mean, the reality is, will we have a fatality again in the United States in the years to come? Yes, we probably will. I mean, I think that that's that kind of goes without saying. Sure. It has not happened in kids since 2003. When it happens, you know, the, the crap is going to hit the fan uh, because of the mentality that you were just describing right. you know, prior to, to having me on. You know, uh, but what is each individual child's risk of dying if they are caught up in an outbreak and they are a healthy, well-nourished child? That risk is not technically zero, but it's as close to zero as, as you can possibly get. I appreciate you taking the time, Bob. That was very informative. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get back to your patients. We look forward to talking to you again soon. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Excellent. Bill. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there you have it. If, if it's even lower, so it's going to be even lower than one in half a million, your risk right now. And vitamin A, uh, you know, hopefully your doctor knows, just take some vitamin A. Don't even come into the hospital unless you're really experiencing, you know, some sort of complications. But let's talk about the deaths. I mean, because they do happen. 
Very rarely, as Bob pointed out, the next death is going to be the biggest news story there is. And, and I want to make something very clear, too, right now, that we hear about world death rates. They do this all the time in order to terrify everybody about the measles, saying hundreds of thousands of people are going to die this year from the measles. As we pointed out, if you're malnourished, if you have flies around your lips and you have a distended stomach and you're eating one bowl of rice a week, you know, measles is going to be a very problematic uh, issue, illness, um, uh, infection for you. But so is any infection. I mean, any type of malaria or dysentery, you're going to be in real trouble. But if your child is running around in your yard right now, able to laugh and talk, that child is going to do very well. But I want to bring on Jeffrey Jackson to discuss what are the actual numbers, because we get this question all the time. And I've seen quotes of certain dates. I know Bob just said 2003, but I've heard some other quotes. So we went, and I had Jeffrey Jackson look into every possible measles death we've had in, say, the last 20 years. So let's have Jeffrey join us right now. How hey, you Jeffrey. Doing, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing all right. All right. It's, it's measles mania out there. Every news anchor will say it's deadly. It should be dead. Can we get that little clip of that doctor just saying it's deadly? Just to remind people what it sounds like on the news. Do you have that little short misinformation clip we made? Is that still in there? Hold on. I just want to get a vibe of this because, uh, you know, I kind of want to make fun of these people that really go out of the way to give us a sense of that. I'm making this hard on my team today. <laughs> measles actually kills people. So measles actually kills people. Jeffrey, when was the last most recent death from the measles? At least as far as in some reports, I, hear, I heard something around 2015 or 13. Is, is there a case in there? Yes, correct. It's 2015. It was a woman, and she had underlying conditions. So I looked back at the Seattle Times. It was a uh, woman from Washington State. So I looked at the okay. reporting at Seattle Times at the time, and this is what they wrote about, uh, about it. It was, uh, this is a quote, the, the young woman's health condition was redacted from public records, but it required her to take drugs that suppressed her immune system. She may have been vaccinated against measles as a child, but her family couldn't produce the evidence, which left her uh, status categorized as unknown. So she had no obvious symptoms of the measles, but was tested after she passed away from pneumonia. And she was on immunosuppressive um, drugs for, for other underlying health conditions. So that was 2015. And like Dr. Sears said, 20, uh, 2003 well, hold on, was hold the on. last. So, so let me just look at that case, because that's the one that gets mm -hmm. thrown in my face all the time. I've said 2003, but this 2015 case. So this is a woman. Let me get this straight. She's in a hospital. She's, she's got some other illness. She ultimately has pneumonia. She's on immunosuppressive drugs. After she dies, someone does a blood test and finds titers, right, saying her body obviously fought the measles at some point. Were there, was that during an epidemic? Were there cases of measles that we knew she caught it from or in that town? No epidemic at the time. It was, um, it looked like a somewhat of an isolated case. And uh, so, like it said in the reporting, the, it wasn't even clear if she had been vaccinated uh, as a child. So it, 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 the, her, her category or status was un, unknown at the time as far as vaccination status. So looking at her post-mortem, we just decided she somehow spontaneously exploded into measles that they didn't see. There was no rash. CDC didn't confirm it, but we know that there was some titers in there. And so this is one of the cases that you will hear brought up. Well, there was a case in 2015 where a grown woman died. Well, there's your facts. You can decide whether you want to report that or not. To me, not CDC verified. She didn't come in with a rash or, or presenting as measles. Nobody even put measles on her chart. But after she died from pneumonia uh, while on immunosuppressive drugs, and probably because of, you know, she, we don't do we even know why she was on those drugs, but she no, they was they obviously redacted very, it from public records. So there's a very sick woman, and somebody decided to make that a measles case, is what it sounds like to me. So there's your 2015 case. Now, before that, then what is the next uh, runner-up? So we have a, a child, uh, like Dr. Sears mentioned, in 2003. And this child was 13 years old, had recently received a bone marrow transplant for a rare okay. disease. And after that, uh, had passed away four months later. Um, measles was confirmed after the death once again. So it was not confirmed while the child was living, um, much like the woman in 2015. 
So now, so again, so we have a child in the hospital, bone marrow transplant. And, you know, I have to say, I worked on the doctors, you know, surgeons, you know, are sort of rated by their death rate, right? They're rated by, you know, are they good at what they do? How many bone marrow transplants? Did someone die of a bone marrow transplant? And if you're going to say, you know, I have a lot of success with bone marrow transplants, every death from the procedure sort of is, is, goes against you. It certainly goes against being able to talk someone into it. So it would be really nice if you could say, hey, I had a great patient, you know, bone marrow transplant was doing great, but then they died of the measles. But nobody even saw this kid catch the measles, right? Again, this case, and this one's held up a lot. The child, the, you know, children died. So this is the kid in 2003 that died. And again, they only find it post-mortem. Uh, and the child had absolutely no immune system whatsoever. So I suppose there's a chance... You know, and there's a, and I say this all the time, and we're going to get into it a little bit later, does measles shed, but on the door of that, that cancer um, uh, ward, I'll bet you it said, if you've been recently vaccinated, do not enter here. People with, you know, weakened immune systems are in here. Well, why would that be the sign? And we pointed this out. Johns Hopkins in different hospitals have that sign. If you've been, here it is. If you have any of the symptoms below, please do not visit. Fever, diarrhea, flu-like, sneeze, eye drainage, a skin. And if you've had a live vaccine within 30 days, chickenpox, MMR, shingles, nasal flu mist, rotavirus, or yellow fever, do not come in here. So when you hear that vaccines are safe and nobody sheds it, well, that flies in the face of that. Was there a measles outbreak while this kid was in the hospital? Did we have a huge outbreak around uh, that town? No. No, there wasn't. Um, it was uh, measles. Measles were, as far as the death was concerned, there was nothing else going on. Obviously, and the the numbers were were nothing, nothing um, okay. substantial in that town. So, 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 no measles. In fact, my understanding of that story is they don't even know where he got it because it wasn't anywhere in the city or state at that time. Okay, so before that, so that's 2003. I know a lot about that one. Now, before then, then what's the next one that we we see? Well, during this, this comes from the journals of infectious diseases. They did a, a kind of retrospective study. And during 1993 to 1999, they can only find one acute measles related death reported to the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics. So there's, there's a pretty big gap there with, with measles. I looked through a lot of the reports, um, the, the summary of notifiable diseases for the CDC for, for, almost two decades or a little over two decades and there wasn't too much to to be talked about they have icd numbers in there and these are the health systems medical diagnosis that they they kind of slap on for for measles so there was a couple numbers there but those aren't lab confirmed so that's that's a whole different story that that could be you know anywhere it's like saying someone passed away of pneumonia and you can say well they died of the flu because they didn't get the flu shot that year but it's kind of like a catch-all catch diagnosis. So we're, right. we're, when we're looking for lab confirmed, that's when we're having the problem here, really going back in the last couple of decades and finding these cases. Right, and, and this is something, Jeffrey, that I, I keep pointing out. It's amazing because this isn't the first year we're hearing measles is deadly. We all went through the Disneyland outbreak, deadly measles, deadly measles, deadly measles. Um, you know, am I the only one in America still alive? And I, I'm speaking to all of you out there. Am I the only one that, you know, wants some accountability from my news agencies? I mean, am, am I the only one that says, if you're going to say something's deadly, I want to see a death. If you're going to call it a deadly snowstorm, how did someone die from the snow? Like, I, I need to see a death. Usually that's like a car accident or something. But someone has to have died. And now, year upon year upon year, deadly measles, deadly measles, deadly measles, deadly measles, and no one's dying. And right now, we're up over 700 cases that we know of. Uh, you know, I would guess that there's a lot of people that are having measles parties right now quietly because you've got this terror now. You have a government uh, that's deciding to quarantine people and saying you're going to be banned from the streets and public spaces. Well, when you start hearing that and you're saying, and the only way in the future I can, you know, avoid being quarantined or put in a cell block or is that I'm going to just have had to have had the measles. I mean, they're driving people to measles parties. It used to be something fun you did just to get out of the way. Now you got to do it to make sure that your kid's going to be able to freely walk down the street the rest of their life without being quarantined. 
So I imagine that the numbers are much higher, but where are the deaths, folks? Doesn't it bother you to hear every news anchor you trust, every medical reporter tell you it's deadly, and yet in the giant measles outbreak, you know, around Disneyland, and during the one right now, nobody's died yet, nobody's dying. Does it feel like this thing's being sensationalized, at least a little bit, at least a little bit? Well, so Jeffrey, thank you for pointing it out. So in the last 20 years, we have about three cases. Two of them are really debatable whether they're even decent cases. And so, you know, there we have it.